Hello, I'm Jason with MathTutorDVD.com and today we're going to use the TI-89 and get comfortable with the trigonometric functions, namely sine, cosine, and tangent, and we'll also get into some other functions as well as we, as we go into this thing. Now the thing to realize and, and sort of know is that right here in the center of, you know, front and center, you have the three main trigonometric functions. Here's sine in blue, cosine in blue, and tangent in blue, and you have your inverses uh, also next to it. So on most calculators, you'll have dedicated buttons for sine, cosine, and tangent, but on the TI-89, the way it's laid out, they didn't make it its own dedicated button. It's a second function, so you just have to kind of squint your eyes a little bit and find it. Um, you use these functions just like you might expect. Now before we start using them, I want you to realize that if you look on your calculator screen, uh, we're in radian mode, which is usually, you know, when you start getting up in math, what you're going to use. If you ever want to change it from radian mode, go into the mode menu, and you'll see right, uh, looks like it's going to be on page two, so hit F2, uh, and you'll see, actually, let's go to F3, go back to F1, radian, actually, it's right in front of me here, so angle, radian. So you could, if you wanted to, go down to radian and change this to degrees or even gradients, but for now, let's just leave it, you know, in radians because most of the time that's what you'll use. You want to take the sine of a number, second function, sine, and, uh, you know, stick the number in there. Now, the easiest thing to do to play around with this is just to put pi in, so second function pi, it's a nice number to have, uh, so sine of pi and you'll get zero because if you think about the unit circle when you go over to pi radians the sine is zero now if you do cosine so over here of the same thing pi then you're not going to get zero you'll get negative one because if this is your coordinate axis then pi radians is over here on the other side now just to sort of show you and drill it home if you go over here to radians and change this to degrees and hit uh, enter to save it if we do cosine pi again, then the calculator is not going to know that this is pi radians. It's going to treat it as pi degrees, which is just simply like 3.14 degrees, a very small number of degrees. And so it's not going to return an exact number. It's going to leave the answer in a sort of exact form because when it does the calculation, it's good, there's a million decimal places after the answer. So rather than truncate it, it's just going to leave it exact. And obviously you want to know what the answer is. So hit green and then the approximately equal symbol and it'll convert that to 0.99 so I just wanted to show you that you know when you're in degree or radian mode obviously matters a great deal because the calculator is going to completely treat this differently uh, which is exactly what it should do so let's go back to mode and let's go ahead and change it from degrees back to radian measure okay tangent behaves basically the same way you could hit tangent of a number or you could do uh, uh, tangent of pi divided by 2 let's say and you're going to get undefined because when you think about it tangent of pi over 2 is is basically infinity so if you think about it tangent from trigonometry tangent is sine over cosine so let's go ahead and investigate this a little bit sine of pi divided by 2 sine of pi divided by 2 is 1 and cosine of pi divided by 2 divided by 2 is zero so I already told you and you should know from trig tangent function is equal to sine divided by cosine so if I take sine of pi over 2 I'm gonna get 1 if I take cosine of pi over 2 I'm gonna get 0 if I try to divide these two numbers I'm going to get infinity and the calculator doesn't put an infinity symbol it just says it's undefined so if you plot the tangent function you will see that there are these asymptotes that go on up to infinity and to negative infinity that's just because of the way it's defined it's totally normal so it's a pretty simple matter to use your TI-89 to calculate sine, cosine, and tangent because they're printed right here on, on the thing here. Now notice the inverse value is also printed right next to it. So for instance, if you were going to do, um, let's do something a little bit more interesting. Let's say sine of pi over 4. And all of you taking trig should absolutely remember what sine of pi over 4 is. It's one of the core, because sine of those pi over 4 radians is 45 degrees. Uh, the calculator does it in beautiful fashion. Square root of 2 over 2, that's what you should memorize from your trig tables. Um, most calculators will just give you a decimal. And you could, of course, get a decimal yourself, but it's nice leaving it in this form. So sine of pi over uh, 4 radians is square root of 2 over 2 in exactly the same thing that cosine 
of pi divided by 4 radians is exactly the same thing. And this is just coming from your trig tables. Now, if you take cosine of an angle and get a value back, then if I take and take the inverse cosine, so I'm going to hit green button, inverse cosine, that's what the negative 1 means, of my last answer, my last answer being square root of 2 over 2, then I should get back pi over 4 radians, and that's exactly what I get. So these inverse cosines and inverse tangents and inverse sines behave exactly how you might expect. You put a number in there, and it's going to spit out an angle in radians that's going to, uh, to be equivalent to that. Now if we go back into the mode menu just for kicks here and change this to degrees and hit this, then instead of, just to make it clear, we'll take out this last answer thing. We'll take the inverse cosine of, we'll do square root of 2, and I'll close this parentheses here, and I'll divide it by 2. So I'm taking inverse cosine square root of 2 over 2, exactly the same thing that we did before, but now we're in degree mode. So instead of pi over 4 radians, we're going to get 45 degrees back, which is exactly the same measure. So the calculator mode obviously affects this. My recommendation is really just to leave it in radian mode unless there's a really good reason not to because most of the time in real engineering and real science you're going to to use that. Now there's one thing I want to show you. Let me go ahead and clear this out. Uh, also in trigonometry, you know, the main trigonometric functions are sine, cosine, and tangent. Those are the core ones. In fact, the main ones are sine and cosine. Tangent is just the ratio, sine divided by cosine, but typically we say sine, cosine, and tangent. Now in trig you also learn about the cotangent, the secant, and the cosecant. Now there aren't any buttons directly on your calculator for those, and those of you taking trig should know how to calculate the cotangent, secant, and cosecant simply by you know, um, using these other functions here. You can, you can derive those in terms of sine, cosine, and tangent. But if you forget that, um, you can always go into the menus here. And so what you can do if you're trying to get to secant, cosecant, type of functions that you typically don't use as often is you can go over here in the math menu. In here in the math menu you have all these menus here. Well if you keep going down past number eight, uh, algebra, trig, calculus, and hyperbolic, if you go into trig then you have a trigonometry menu and see the first three functions here in the trig menu are exactly what you already have on the calculator, sine, cosine, and tangent. So there's really no reason that you would ever come into this menu to use these functions. They, they're exactly the same thing as pressing the button, but the cosecant, uh, secant, and all these other things are not buttons on the calculator. So let's do uh, secant. We can hit enter here. Uh, and what you can do is you can go ahead and hit enter here and put secant on the stack. We're already in radian mode. So we can do, let's just do for kick, secant of pi divided by 6 radians. So that's 30 degrees if you're thinking in degrees. Secant of pi over 6 radians. And it's going to evaluate that and we'll get 2 times the square root of 3 over 3. Now, if you wanted to do this in the old, old other way, you should also remember that secant is 1 divided by the uh, cosine. So if you take 1 divided by and then just hit cosine and do exactly the same thing, pi over 6, pi divided by 6, because the secant function is by definition equal to 1 divided by the cosine of the same angle, then we get exactly the same answer. So it's really not that big of a handicap not having the secant and the cosecant here because for those of you who are taking trig, you'll know that the cotangent function, let me go in here to the math menu to, to make sure this is, this is uh, everybody's clear. Uh, the, the cotangent function is equal to 1 over the tangent function. The secant function is equal to 1 over the cosine function. And the cosecant function is equal to 1 over the sine function. So you can really calculate all three of these things without coming into this menu if you kind of know what you're doing as far as trig goes, but they are here in case you forget those relationships. Now the other thing I'll say is that depending on how old your TI-89 is, you may not even have this menu at all, this trig menu here. Um, some of the older TI-89s don't even provide it because like I said, you can, you can still find the answers of all of these things using just sine, cosine, and tangent. But if you have a newer one, Obviously you'll have this menu and it'll be very useful for you and quicker. 
And uh, but if you don't, you can either upgrade the, the the ROM inside of your calculator. You can get your owner's manual out and figure out how to do that. Um, but you know what? I wouldn't even bother with it because if you just learn your trigonometry properly, you'll know um, the inverses of sine, cosine, tangent is going to be equal to these other other guys here. Now, also in this menu, it provides the inverse sine, the inverse cosine, the inverse tangent, and the inverse cosecant, secant, and cotangent. And that's all that's in that menu there. So you'll, you'll use those if, if you need to. But like I said, for the inverses of these other functions and for these other functions up here, you can really get by by just using the, the base trigonometric functions that you have. Um, so that is going to conclude our lesson. Basically, we've, we've learned that the TI-89 has the base trigonome trigonometric function, sine, cosine, and tangent up here on the buttons in second function blue. The inverses are in uh, green. And so we can do a lot of calculations without even going into a menu. We can even calculate secant and cosecant by just knowing the relationships between the functions. But if we get stuck or confused, we can always go into the math menu and go into the trig menu. And we have everything laid out for us here. So if we get stuck or confused, we can do that again. Make sure that you understand if you're in degrees or radians. There's nothing more confusing than putting something in your calculator and getting a crazy answer. And it's just because you're in a different mode. If you look here, it'll tell you if you're in radians. If you change to degrees, it'll say DEG for degrees. So make sure you know what mode you're in. I recommend you always leave it in radian mode unless you have a very good reason to pull out of that. I'm Jason. I hope you learned something in this section. Trigonometric functions are central to every branch of math. Make sure you understand how to use the calculator to, to find these functions.